What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic, and it's wicked because they finally released Logic Blocks into the beta, and as all you know, I'm a huge fan of Logic. Uh, I've been doing binary circuits in this game for a long, long time, and I was super excited when I found out they had even announced Logic Blocks, and now that they're finally here, it's amazing. The, the, the potential is huge. Um, I haven't played around with them too much. I'm not going to go back and fix all my old circuits. I mean, they are what they are. They're kind of like novelty pieces now anyways. So I'm not going to go back and fix all those, but I really wanted to showcase all, all the new blocks. So here's the two new blocks right here. There's a logic block and there's a timer block. And the logic block has all these different gates. So it's got six different gates. And uh, they've got this sort of diagram here, which I haven't really looked at. And then they've got the timer block, and the timer block is really, really nice. Just lets you go up to 59 seconds and then full 60 with this slider bar for the actual seconds. It's a pretty nice timer. Um, if you need it longer than a minute, you could just kind of run them in a series, I guess. Oh yeah, it does work. Well, that's cool. So you can run them in a series, I guess, if you need longer than a minute. Uh, but the timer really really cool. So I just wanted to showcase really quickly all the various logic blocks And then I got some cool little logic blocks to show you guys. And this is the new timer very very simple stuff You know you just use your little switch and as you use your switch or your button or whatever um, It'll activate the timer and so on and so forth Your old school way of doing a timer you had to have a switch hooked up to a controller and your controller You just had the bearing move after a certain amount of time and you would adjust its speed and so on and that would make that timer work the gates, the logic gates are pretty simple. So an AND gate, two inputs have to be on and then the output will be on. And the old school method of doing that, um, which, I've, which I've showed a few times, but you had two bearings, one rotating the sensor, one rotating whatever the sensor's looking at. And so you can see if only one of them is on, it won't work. Then you've got the OR gate. So again, the OR gate is either OR or both, doesn't matter, and it will work. And the old school method, of course, you had a controller for each one of your switches and you had to just, you know, put bars in front of a sensor and the sensor had range on it. The logic blocks have an instant time. And so it's a lot easier to just use logic blocks because you can just have nested OR gates and you can have like 3000 inputs if you really wanted to. If you wanted to wire it all up, it's really up to you. And then we've got the uh, the XOR gate. So the XOR is what's known as an exclusive OR. And basically it means one or the other, but not both. So if they're off, it won't work. If one's on, it will, right? Simple stuff. And the old school way of doing that, you'd have two controllers, you'd have a bearing here, a double bearing set up. And so if one was on, the bearing would rotate once. If both were on, it would rotate past. If you turn the other one off, you can see. So this was the old school way I used to do it. Never really had to use that too much though, to be perfectly honest. Um, now we're into the fun stuff. So this is memory. Now the old school memory bit was a sensor like that. You'd set it. The sensor is now self-perpetuating on the second controller, leaving that on. And then you can reset it by swinging that bar out. This is old school memory. Memory in real life, like actual computer memory, uses two NOR gates. Basically, they're connected in a loop. And long story short, when one's active, as you can see here, so this one's now active. Now, because of scrap mechanic, you can't wire up this gate to this one and then this gate back to the same one. So you have to have this OR gate in the middle to complete the circuit. Um, but you can actually use this OR gate as your output. So we'll say this is our output. So now you can see the bit is set. This one has two inputs, this OR gate and this switch. And because both inputs are off, this one's on. Now this one has two inputs, this one here and this switch. And because this one's on, this one is off. But when you hit the button, they switch. And then you hit the reset button and they switch back. So that's your basic memory bit. The sweet thing about this, this is bulky. This is three blocks. You can make a memory bit with three blocks now. It's absolutely fantastic. You can have them just completely in this tiny little compact shell. The simplest thing to do with a memory bit is a timer circuit. Um, and I actually use this exact circuit for the next thing I'm gonna show you. But a simple timer circuit, really, you have one button and a timer. And what happens is your button actually turns on the bit, but at the same time it turns on the bit, it also turns on the timer. And so you can see, there you go. But then the timer itself is the reset switch for the bit. So you, you could do this before, and I've done, this is how the sliding doors for Komodo work. So when I built those sliding doors, um, it used this exact same method. When you hit the button or when you stood on the sensor, basically the same thing, the bit would activate and it would also activate the timer. And then when the timer reached the end, it would send a pulse to deactivate the bit. 
That's exactly the same thing, except now it's only, you know, four blocks. And basically, this is the exact same circuit with the bit spread out there, but now set up on a door. Hit the button, the door opens, it'll stay open until that timer's done, and then the door will close. You can't hit the button a second time to close it, it's, it will close on the timer. If you hit the button a second time, it'll just kind of sit there. And if you keep hitting it, it'll actually just reset the... If, oh, I missed, but... Now the timer's all glitchy. So that is the entire mechanism with this controller hooking it up. And then, of course, I had to make it super compact. So it's a 2x2. Two two. Uh, I've already uploaded this to Workshop, actually. I uploaded it last night. Um, but you can see here, you just spawn in this little door control block. And it's super easy to set up. So we'll just, we'll just break this one here. Take this one off. So it's super easy to set up. You get this door control block, you just weld it to whatever. Doesn't really matter, weld it anywhere. The blue controller here, or the blue gate here, is for your buttons, so it's an OR gate. So I connect my two buttons to it. And uh, you can see I have a free floating bearing here in the roof. That connects to my controller. And then the timer, I can set the time. So we're gonna go down to one second here on the timer. And we'll set the gate to open the door 90 degrees. And now if I hit the button, one second. Oh, that's a little short. There you go, gate, and it closes. So it's a great little modular block. You can just, you know, like I'm gonna just spawn a ton of them. Whenever I build a door, this is exactly how I'm gonna hook the door up now. Um, I just find, I was, I was really tired, honestly, of having switches with holes in the door and setting up this circuit manually, like with all the old school gates, was a real pain in the butt. All my doors from now on were 100% gonna use this. This just looks more like a door too. It's got like this, you know, sort of button handle. And you literally just have to tap it. You don't, you don't have to hold it, none of that stuff. The old doors you had to hold because you had to wait until the controller moved into place. The new ones, you don't have to do that. You just tap the button. The instant response time is just amazing. Met a few other YouTubers who play Scrap Mechanic as well. And uh, actually, I was talking to Scrap Mechanic last night. So if you haven't checked him out, put his channel down below. Uh, he's a pretty cool guy. He's got wicked builds, like really, really cool builds. I would check him out if you haven't. Um, but I was talking to him last night and he came up with a problem and he said, I have this thing, this sequencer. And what it is basically is it's three switches and three outputs. But regardless of the order that you press any of the three switches, I want the output to always go in order one, two, or three. And I'm like, okay, that seems logical enough. And he had this mechanism set up and it was absolutely amazing. And he, this was before the logic blocks and he showed me this mechanism and I was like, that's cool. And he's like, I also built it with logic blocks, but it was relatively bulky. And he was wondering if you could shrink it down. So this is the sequencer circuit that I came up with. Um, he's the one with the idea though. And he has his own circuits for it, I'm sure. And I would go check his out as well. Um, but this is the circuit that I kind of came up with. And if I press one switch, it'll activate that output. If I press this switch, it'll activate that output. If I press this switch, it'll activate that output. If I press any two switches, the first two outputs will be on. Doesn't matter which two, any two. And if I press all three, then all three outputs are on. And then of course, with the workshop, this entire thing got compacted into this. So this is the sequencer as a single unit, basically. It's all, it's kind of a mess. I mean, it's really hard to sort of follow what's going on in there. But basically you take it and you gotta kind of flip it over. So we'll just, and then we weld it to, we don't have a block. I don't, I don't wanna weld it right to the ground cause you know, I won't get it off. All right, so you take this and you weld it to a block. Then you hook up your three inputs, light blue, one, two, three. And then you hook up your three outputs, the reds. You don't touch any of the blacks in the middle. And now you have a mobile, a mobile sequencer. So one activates one. Two activates two, one, three, one, any two of them. Right, for those two, and all three, of course, does all three. So anyways, guys, those are all the circuits I have for today. I'm definitely gonna be making a lot more circuits. I'm gonna be trying to make as many of these modular circuits as I can. You know, this door with the timer, I think that's just great. It's super convenient, this logic sequencer. I haven't really figured out what I'm gonna use it for yet. Um, I'm probably gonna figure out something because I think it's a really cool idea. 
Uh, but definitely going to be making more circuits. If you guys have any circuits you want me to try making, put them in the comments below. Or if you have any circuits that you need me to make that are like modular, I really like this modular kind of thing with the with the paint color schemes. So you can just, you know, take this circuit, you know, weld it into any map you want and just use it. And uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down below for more circuits and more cool videos. Uh, hit that like button for sure. I'm definitely going to come up with a lot more circuit ideas. I've got, I've got a lot of circuit ideas already. I kind of have to prove them. Um, so I'm working on that, and uh, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all next time.